Welcome into Duval Daily presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thanks so much for tuning in here on Monday, April 8th. We are only a few weeks away from the 2024 NFL Draft, so we've got a mock draft Monday coming up for y'all here today. Really excited to get into it. Appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out GenJag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear like the hat I am wearing right now. We just got these in. Again, GenJag.com slash shop. So, Jaguars Mock Draft Monday here today. I wanted to answer a question from Matt Barnes to start the show. Matt Barnes on Twitter who asked, in my opinion, a very good question. Which stack makes sense or more sense in the first two rounds? Wide receiver, then cornerback. Wide receiver round one, then cornerback round two. Or cornerback in round one and then wide receiver round two. Going to talk about that today, some potential fit, fits there, and then dive into this mock draft as well. Uh, I know Jags fans are really fired up about this question because I think that most fans – want some combination of wide receiver or cornerback in the first two rounds so it's kind of like would you rather brian thomas jr or adonai mitchell and ennis rakestraw or bernardo green or max melton in the second or would you rather one of like kool-aid mckinstry terry on arnold cooper DeGene, and then a keon coleman or troy franklin or jalen polk or J- javon baker in the second round uh, so i think those are kind of different stacks you could be looking at and to be completely honest with you I would be fine with either. I think those stacks make a lot of sense. But if I had to say, I would probably lean towards wide receiver in the first, cornerback in the second. Wide receiver is a more expensive position overall, so I think getting the uh, fifth year under the the uh, first round pick, you know, fifth year option, getting those five years of control of a um, a cost controlled contract makes a lot of sense. I think Brian Thomas Jr. or Adonai Mitchell can be anything you want them to be, with Trevor Lawrence throwing them the football. I think their their ceiling is limitless, basically, because of their athleticism, their ball skills, the natural talent that they bring to the football field. I think both of those guys could be unbelievable with Trevor Lawrence and a Doug Peterson offense. So that's where I would lean, personally, uh, specifically with the Jaguars. Again, I think getting that fifth-year option really helps you out. When, it talks, when you talk about wide receiver. And I think that you've got to get cheaper at the wide receiver position long term. I think that those two guys give you a great opportunity to do that. But I have to be completely honest with you. Neither of those is my favorite stack. I, I would not, personally, I would not go wide receiver or cornerback in round one. And I know that's not a popular opinion, but if you've got Byron Murphy out of Texas or Johnny Newton out of Illinois sitting there at 17, I say run the card in, uh, and I know that neither of them is going to have like bulky length on the interior, so this is, again, more of what I would be doing, what I would be thinking if I was running the show with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Byron Murphy or Johnny Newton, I think they both give you immediate impact. Uh, I, I don't think that Devon Hamilton is keeping either of these guys off the field. You know, I love Devon Hamilton. I hope that he gets back to full strength this year. But these two guys are too good. And I think when you talk about third down pass rushing situation, you've got Josh Allen, Eric Armstead, Byron Murphy or Johnny Newton, and Trevon Walker on the field. Good luck if you're an offensive line, right? Good luck. I know you want to be able to cover better. I know you want to have more wide receiver talent. And we're going to get to those things here in this draft. I think those are the two, the two deepest positions in this class, wide receiver and cornerback. Byron Murphy or Johnny Newton, they change things up front. They change the equation up front for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and uh, they make this a, a defensive front that is incredibly formidable. It's already a good front, right? Like You've got three really good players. I think Trayvon Walker is taking that step. Josh Allen is obviously a Pro Bowl-level edge rusher. Eric Armstead, a Pro Bowl level interior rusher. So for me, yeah, I would be all over this. I, I think that both of these guys, Johnny Newton for me is a little ahead of Byron Murphy, but either one. I think that Johnny Newton is a blue chip player. Byron Murphy is close to it. I would love it. And again, I know that that's not the biggest need the Jaguars have right now, but I'm trying not to draft for a need. I'm trying to take advantage of Uh, what the board brings to me. And it looks like based on what we've been seeing from around the web, what we've been hearing report wise, 
Johnny Newton's probably going to be available at 17. It sounds like Byron Murphy will be the first one off the board. But if either of those guys is there, that's the direction I'm going. So that's where we're going in this mock draft Monday. Trench play wins. And these two guys are going to be awesome. Again, there's so much depth at cornerback and wide receiver. And we're going to go hit some of that depth here in the second round. Um, trade down to 58 because I like the idea of landing another pick early on day three. Trade down to 58 with the Green Bay Packers. Add an extra fourth round pick. They've got a ton of picks in this class. They could get aggressive to move up at some point. You've heard me talk about that before. Uh, I, I would go get a Jalen Polk or Javon Baker. I think that makes too much sense. I think they're both project to be wide receiver twos in the NFL at worst. I don't necessarily think they're going to be like alpha number ones, but both can be super high volume targets that can move around the formation, win down the field, win at all three levels. Uh, Jalen Polk is a little bit more stable in his in the way he plays because he does not drop the football. I think he is more of a three-level threat. But Javon Baker, he has a little bit more of that eye-popping, explosive ability when you talk about leaping, going up and catching it with one hand. But both of these guys, I think, just make a ton of sense for the, the Jags. Um, and then the Jags have shown interest in Devontae Walker. If you traded down to 58, would I be mad about taking him at that point? Not really. I do have more of a early third round grade on him, but when you're talking about 58 overall, you're getting close to the third round. Talking about adding that speed element to the Jaguars offense to, to go along with what they already have does make sense to me. I certainly would lean Jalen Polk or Javon Baker over either of those two guys. And this is, you know, assuming Ricky Pearsall, Lad McConkey, all those guys off the board. Even if they're on the board, I'm still probably leaning Jalen Polk because I just think the projection is incredibly stable. But uh, would love that for the Jaguars, for Trevor Lawrence in the second round to get another receiver who can really push it on the outside opposite Gabe Davis, you know, clear out space better for Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram to eat underneath. I think that that could really work for the Jaguars. And no, again, they don't have the ceiling of a Brian Thomas Jr. or an Adonai Mitchell, but I strongly believe in trench play. I strongly believe that that Johnny Newton and, and Byron Murphy are better football players um, than what you could get at wide receiver in the first round. So that's where I'm going. I then go Mason McCormick or Dominic Pooney in the third. Uh, I think that last year, offensive line injuries derailed the Jaguars season. We're not having that happen again. It's it's just not going to happen again if if I'm running the show. Um, Mason McCormick, Dominic Pooney, either one can play all three spots on the interior of the offensive line, right? So you've got versatility, you've got depth that you're adding to this group. Uh, I think that that's the way to go. I, I really do. Um, then in the fourth round, we've got three picks. It is time to go cornerback hunting. Look, the Chiefs have laid out a blueprint for finding good corners on on day three of the draft and obviously their best guy Trent McDuffie was a top pick for them but uh, I think that you have Tyson Campbell who you feel really good about it as a starter moving into year four it's a contract year for him I think that he's going to play his best ball going into year four going into a contract year um, and then you've got Ronald Darby who can start for you and then you've got Darnell Savage, who will start for you at nickel. So like you, you're not bereft of talent. But now it's time to go try to swing uh, on some of these day three guys that really could be day two guys in different classes. And we'll start at 114 with cornerback Jerry and Jones out of Florida State. Started his career at Ole Miss, but at Florida State, I mean, this guy he plays with physicality. He's played nickel. He's also played outside. Played a lot of nickel this past year um, with, with Renardo Green playing on the outside. Jones is super aggressive, super physical, comes downhill, flies towards the football, runs a 4-3-8 40-yard dash. He's six feet tall, only 30-inch arms, so does not have the greatest length. But that's really the only thing I'm looking at that, that I don't love about Jerry and Jones' projection. I think he has fluid hips. I think he can be sticky um, and, and, and has quick feet. Has the long speed evidence by that 438 40-yard dash. He comes in and he competes right away inside and outside, in my opinion. And so I think you start the season probably with Ronald Darby playing opposite Tyson Campbell, which is I think that there's some um 
there's some confusion about what Ronald Darby is. When he is on the field, he is a good starting outside press man cornerback. The issue he has had is injuries. It's not play on the field. Like That's a good football player. So I think he starts the season out as your starting cornerback opposite Tyson Campbell, but then having the depth and having the talent that you're bringing in here with Jerry and Jones and then DJ James at 116 out of Auburn, having those two guys coming in to uh, be able to solidify the depth and add talent to the room, I love it. DJ James, he is not the biggest, right? He is about six foot, has 31-inch arms, so has enough size and length in terms of his height and arm length, w- wingspan. Uh, but he's light. Uh, he's very light, you know, playing at about 175 to 180, I believe. But he can run. He 4-4-2, 40-yard dash, plays the game incredibly physically. He has the fluidity I'm looking for at the cornerback position. He has the mindset I'm looking for at the cornerback position. I love the, what he brings to the table. I would be fine with taking either of those guys on day two of the draft. But it just so happens, as I mentioned, this draft is incredibly deep at cornerback. So uh, you're able to land some values, in my opinion, in the fourth round. That's the strategy I'd be looking to take potentially. Um, and again, would not be mad at all if you go wide receiver and cornerback in round one and two because you're landing good football players. You're landing players that can help your football team really quickly. But uh, again, I just – Johnny Newton or Byron Murphy, I can't get away from it. I cannot. At 126, Edge, Mo Kamara. I do not think he should be on the board this late in the fourth round. I think he should be a day two player as well. I've talked about him a ton on the channel, so I'm not going to belabor the point, but this is a ready-made designated pass rusher from day one for the Jacksonville Jaguars to come in and be a change-up to Trayvon Walker and Josh Allen, who are both big physical athletes. Mo Kamara, he's a very good athlete as well, but Shorter in stature, not as long of arms, but super quick, super feisty. He has a bag of pass rush moves. He can hit you uh, with pretty much anything. He can win around the outside arc. He can win through you. He can win inside. He can move around the formation, rush from different spots for you. So I love that. At 153, I mentioned we're not letting offensive line injuries derail our season. I think if you had to start Delmar Glaze out of Maryland at tackle or guard, on day one, like he could do it. He has the physical ability. He has the length, the athleticism overall, the feet to mirror movements, uh, the power at the point of attack. I think the one area he can improve is his his you know blitz recognition, his uh, ability to recognize and quickly adjust to stunts and different games up front. Uh, but overall, I think that again, if you have to put him in there at some point during his rookie year, you feel a lot better than what you did about putting Blake Hans out there at tackle, right? Uh, so I would love that move for the Jaguars there. And then at 212, another cornerback, DeAndre Prince out of Ole Miss. I've talked about my my desire here to add a bunch of corners in 2024 because, again, I think the class is incredibly deep. I think that uh, beyond, beyond Tyson Campbell and, and Ronald Darby, it's a lot more questions than answers. I, I know Buster Brown has experience. I, I don't think he's great depth. I think he's okay depth. So I honestly think looking at DeAndre Prince, DJ James, Jerry and Jones, I think all three of those guys would beat out Buster Brown in a competition. So then you're talking about uh, having super high level competition behind your two starters to start the season there. And I think that the great thing too about Jones and and uh, DJ, DJ James is that they can compete inside and outside. I think Prince probably could do that as well. He has great speed. He has enough length for you. Um, he's a guy that the Jaguars have shown interest in and a guy that plays the game similar to Jones and and uh, and James with great intensity. He, he does not shy away from physicality against the run. And in this Jaguars defense with Ryan Nielsen, cornerbacks are going to have to be able to come up and hit and play aggressive in run support uh, because a lot of times they're going to be very close to the line of scrimmage. So I think that DeAndre Prince makes sense in that regard as well. Would love that pick. I would love getting those three guys in there to compete with Gregory Jr. and Buster Brown and Chris Braswell and Eric Hallett and all those guys. I think if you're creating that much competition within the back end of your cornerback room, it's going to help things out a lot back there. And then at 236, we've talked about kicker Will Reichert a ton here on the channel. Uh, A guy that has been accurate from 50-plus, accurate uh, from 
pretty much everywhere on the field, right? Doesn't miss extra points. I think he he has the leg to get the ball down the field on kickoffs as well. So I, I, I think you need to add more competition. I know there's some people that believe the Jaguars have done that with Riley Patterson and Joey Sly. I don't think either are a great option. I think adding a kicker at the end of this draft makes a lot of sense for the Jacksonville Jaguars. But that'll do it here again. We fortify that interior of the defensive line early and create a, a massive advantage, in my opinion, up front when you talk about getting the guys that they have on the field together in clear pass rush situations with a Johnny Newton or a Byron Murphy. I would absolutely love it. And then adding wide receiver throughout, adding cornerback throughout. I think the Jaguars need one more wide receiver. I think they need a bunch of corners to come in and compete. Let me know what you guys think about this one in the comment section below. You can also hit me up on Twitter at Jordan DeLugo. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjack.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear like the hat I am wearing right now. Y'all have a good one.